Good day and welcome to the April tour of our plots, which are obviously now together. So effectively it's one plot and come October when our tenancy agreements get renewed, it's actually going to be plot six instead of plot six and six A. So they're joining this to make one full plot again, which is fabulous. At the moment, an awful lot of plots are being split up, so it's great to have a whole plot put back together. Yeah, so there's a lot going on on the site, on our plots at the moment. Some are, are really great, some are a bit challenging. Most of our challenging things are wildlife centric. We put some brassicas out quite early because we're taking part in a trial. And part of the trial is to see whether if you put brassicas out earlier, they will succumb less to aphids and cabbage white butterflies and and effectively animals. I don't think it's working. We're, we're doing the trial bit where it's right at the front. So we're the first people to plant things out. And the idea is that you plant the plant out younger and it establishes, it takes a while to establish, but then it grows stronger. Actually, we're not finding that. And I'm going to be sowing some brassicas again, which is not a problem because we sowed them very early because that was part of this trial. So the other thing is Fenella the fox. Having put some scaf net over two of our brassica beds, um, she got in. And I know she got in because I found a buried um, wood pigeon head and a buried wing of one of a left wing of a bird. So I know Fenella's got in there. Obviously, they they foxes can use ground like a larder. They dig a hole and put something in that they're going to sort of eat later on and cover it up. And that's what happened in, in both of these instances. The head was in one, <laughs> the, the wing was in another. Where the rest is, God only knows. Um, but what Fenella hadn't done when she left the netting was put the spikes back in to stop the pigeons going in. So then the pigeons got in and the pigeons had a right royal peck of our brassicas. So they're all having looked really, really good like four weeks ago. They're all looking a bit sad. But um, and also she seems to really love where we've got our pea bed and I sowed some radish in there. She seems to love digging up the radish, not particularly keen digging up anything else, but likes digging up the radish. Very odd behaviour. Anyway, let's go out there and have a look. All right, we're at the corner of the plot. Not a lot of change here. Let's come to this area. I'm using the two pallets from the old compost bin as a staging area to put plants on. In here we have oregano and buddleia cuttings and some pulmonaria right at the back and on this one some verbascum, euphorbia, rhubarb, rosemary, more buddleia, oxide daisy and a kiwi I think. So none of these are particularly enjoyed by slugs and snails so I'm just using that for the moment so that we can relieve some area up on this deck here or staging rather. This is the rose that was cut back. Seems to be doing quite well. It's interesting when you do look, you notice things that you've missed. So look here is a, here, sorry, in the wrong area, is a dead bit, which can certainly come off. And then if I come in here, this bit up here is not really doing much. So I might cut that back as well. Always keep an eye on these things. Oh, but um, is that a look in there? Can you see that? It's not in the sun, it's in the shade. There, it's a bud, flower bud. Yay! 
Nothing in our iris tub at the moment, but that will come later. The compost bins are doing fine, so they're doing what they should do. And then down here, we're letting this area right along the bottom be taken over by stinging nettles. What we're not going to allow it to be taken over by is this bindweed. So I am actually, oddly enough, weeding this stinging nettle patch every three or four days, taking out the bindweed where I see it. Right, I'm going to come around here and then you can see the shape, but I'm going to go the other side to actually show you what's happening. So we have sown half of this area with chard and beetroot and let me just go down here I've come this side A because of the wind and B because of my shadow these are our El Craig onions that have been planted out they're doing pretty well. Then in the rest of this bed, in this third up here, we have some Cavolo Nero. And we also have Cavolo Nero in here, though you cannot hardly see it. You see there it is. So this is part of a trial of brassicas where they're being planted out as a much younger plant. We're at the sort of far end or the front end, if you like, where things are planted out early. And I have to say, at the moment, they're not liking it. These would normally be much bigger when they go in. But we're part of this trial, and that's what we're doing. And then along that edge and along this edge, we have sown seeds. This is beetroot de auto, which... Let me see. Can you see just in there? they're starting to germinate. And then if I come over here, these are elephant, red elephant carrots, which again, I'm not sure if you can see that, they're very tiny. Maybe over there, can you see more over there? Just go in there, very young at the moment. They've just germinated in the last few days, which is great. Nothing in this half of the bed, but then from the markers you can see, we've got two, uh, four rows of beetroot. We've got four rows of, um, sorry, we've got two rows of Dicciogia, and then we've got one of a red ball variety. Sorry, two of a red ball, two Dicciogia. The Dicciogia, I come in, you can see they're germinating rather nicely in both rows. The next one, which is the special red one, has not... Oh no, it has! Oh, am I pointing you in the right area? Let me put my finger down. No, I'm not. There, look, they are red. Interesting. Hmm. So that's another two rows of carrots, both of which I haven't grown before. And then these last two rows, sorry, need to come out. Last two rows are bright light chard, which are germinating. Uh, there. You can see just here. I have, I felt it was, I felt the chard in particular was a bit slow. It's now about 14 days since they were planted and I feel they're a bit slow. So I have planted some in the polytunnel as well, which I'll transplant out. We've also put chervil in at the edges. Right, coming into here, Fenella's bed. You can see that there are some brassicas in there and maybe you can see one in the middle 
and then we have these which are younger again we'll just go in sorry i'm not being very good yeah see that's very young that one like the others now on this side on the right hand side is two rows of broccoli earliest i think they are and then on this side is broccoli natalino which are taller plants already in the middle we have portuguese cabbage which you can't really see because they've been put in early if i just go in there can you see there's a portuguese cabbage right in the middle of the screen there i do have some other portuguese cabbage which are now a staple for us um, which will go out if this doesn't all work which to be fair as a trial at the moment it seems as though we've got the hard end of the trial because all of these are going in much earlier than i'd normally put them out but as i say that's the trial i think there's 50 people involved in this trial right these are going to be either tomato or bean beds but already down this side we have cocoa de pampol sown and then down this edge we have rock and core so we've already put beans into this however are either our beans our climbing beans or our tomatoes need to go either here or in bags here so I'm not sure which is which I'm tending to think that the tomatoes will do better in here because there's deeper soil so nothing has germinated yet from that sowing but that sowing only went in a few weeks maybe a week ago Right, so I was interrupted then. That's the bed we were just talking about, about tomatoes. It's the butterfly. Mint at the end here. These are two types of lettuce which have started to do okay. Not great, certainly not as good as Kelly's. Look at Kelly from Kelly's Kitchen Garden. Her lettuce are looking amazing. Right, in this area we have parsnips. We do have at the front here two rows of parsley root. Now that's actually a parsley that develops a root like a parsnip. Then next to it we have pars parsnip, not parsley, parsnip white gem. Then a couple of rows of Guernsey half long, fresh seed, and then at the end to here are Guernsey half long save seed from seed that we saved a few um gosh that was a year ago now yeah right into this bed mixed very mixed in this bed this is our peas bed we have Oregon sugar pod two rows coming up to these which have germinated pretty poor well incredibly poorly we've now sown ambassador pea into there and then and then in the middle we have two rows of train driver one row of train driver and one row of hearst i'm gonna to have to come this way because you can't see sorry about the shadow so there that's better isn't it the ones here are hearst green shaft ones here train driver germination really poor we have a great again re -sown ambassador into their ambassador p and then over to this one right these have done really well 
we've got a we've got three types of p here and all of these are doing well i don't really understand why that is but hey ho i'm going to need to look and see what the the names are i will let you know this first row first couple of rows then we go to another couple of rows then another couple of rows there's three varieties i can't remember which order they're in and i can't read the the label so i'm gonna to have to look at my notes and come back to you on that right our flower border bed we do have some flowers in there now that's doing nicely i've sown wild flower seeds or not wild flower seeds bee friendly seeds on the top here we'll see how that does obviously that will that whole bed will develop better for next year our fruit section is doing fine raspberries at the end black currant gooseberry and gooseberry yeah then we've got our blueberries look at those little beauties aren't they gorgeous lovely this one we dug out of the ground it was behind the ceanothus which is over there and these two we had in pots so that's going to be our blueberry hedge various sunflowers and brassicas i think what are those all year round cauliflowers and three types of nixed sunflowers there This lavender sadly has had its day. I'm not sure what happened. I think it got too much water at one point. So I'm gonna have to replace that. All of that's looking good. You may have seen this store. Gosh, there's a plane. Right, this is a plastic store that we were given last year and I'm using it at the moment as we use any space sort of level space at the moment obviously it's not level because I've put wooden bricks underneath to level off these trays more sunflowers from Nick's sunflower challenge and then at the back we've got the modular sown beetroot more sunflowers and these are Brussels sprouts which certainly need a water in fact that's Brussels sprouts and cauliflower there cauliflower this side Brussels sprouts this side yeah, they've been potted on since you last saw them. Right, what I'm thinking of doing here is using these effectively as bamboo holders. So at the moment, all the bamboos are on the ground over there. And I'm thinking of somehow using these and put slatting the bam bamboos down into there so that they all stand up vertically not sure i was going to do it the other day i did mention it briefly on sunday chat but i'm not quite sure this is the best place to do that so i'm having a think about that right potted on some sweet peas these are going to need some support obviously up here right coming around to our little nursery area there's more space here because as I say I've moved things further down so we have perennial kale there some more sunflowers of the bascom at the back and this is a this is a I've been told this is a onion type flower I think it's what Vivi had in her patch the other day oh, it's so bright up here we have cosmos purity and then look in here are marmond four marmond seeds i sowed cold in the polytunnel in january and they're the only ones from our first sowings that actually worked i'm counting the first sowings as these trials and also our sowings in february our sowings in february of tomatoes did not germinate at all very bizarre 
right, then coming round here, a few more Cavolo, Nero, what are they, what are these? Kale, Thousand Head, which we'll come on to, some more Portuguese cabbage, this is a perennial kale, this one is panache, I think, panache de bentum kale, and then this one is a de bentum kale. Right, let's go round to the second plot, second half of the plot. Broad beans, look at the broad beans. Let me just put you down. Look at that, absolutely covered in flowers, really standing up quite happily. They're about two and a half foot at the moment and I'm hoping for really good crops from these. They're being visited when the sun is on them by the bees so I'm sure they're being pollinated. Very happy. At the front we're putting some, or we have put some seeds in, some flower seeds. You can see down here, um, see how they do there, something like Escherosa, something like that. I do have these names, but I forget them. There's our asparagus, which is going to move next year, next growing season. Right, I'm letting this rhubarb go to seed. It's never that happy here. It's never been that happy. And I thought, you know what, I'll let it go to seed and just enjoy it as a plant rather than as rhubarb, which is what I'm doing another plane we have i'll move over here we've sunk this washing up bowl into the ground this washing up bowl was standing proud of the ground before we've put it in put a little um iris in there so things can get in and out of there and there was a um, frog in there yesterday already so there we are more brassicas again more brassica damage and more failure of brassicas broccoli rabe all of the ones this side are broccoli rabe and as you can see let me come around here look at that already going to flower and in there, not sure if you can see, already going to flower. So those will be coming out. I'm not going to do broccoli rabe again. We had really good luck with them the first year that we sowed them. They did absolutely fantastically. And every time we've sown them since then, they have bolted. Last year, they bolted when they were only about three inches tall. So this year, at least they've got to about six inches before bolting. One thing to notice is that the pigeons don't like them because Fenella also got in here. This is where the pigeon head was. And along here we have Kale Thousand Head. And if I come in there, can you see? It's not bright light, is it, today? Let me see if I can lift that up. You can see the damage on those so they're going to have to be re-sown they should all be looking a bit like this one at the front for some reason they didn't like this one at the front well not too much anyway but yeah you can see how much damage there's been in there so that was the same for the other one down there as well right Portuguese cabbage and collard greens all going to flower, being really enjoyed by bees and also bee fly. And um, there's been lots of bee flies over these over the past few days, but not a lot of action on it today at the moment. That bed there is being prepared for our courgettes. This one is a wildflower seedbed this year. We're letting those bluebells stay. That fennel in there, right in there, stay. 
and the rest has been sowed with wildflower seeds. Our onions, white onions at the front, or at the back rather, up here. Is that the front? Yeah, well, sort of, over that area anyway. They're jet set, they're doing well, needs a bit of weeding. What I have noticed is there's quite a few seeds of um, Portuguese cabbage in there. And what I'm also getting, look at this, can you see that? Carrots, I think. It's either carrots or parsnips, but I think it's carrots. We had carrots and onions, uh, carrots and parsnips in this bed last year. I think some of the carrots are self-seeded. Elephant garlic there doing well, and then spring onions at the front here. Again, you can see there's quite a lot of carrots growing in there. I'm going to let the carrots grow and any other weeds will just come out when they're big enough to come out. This is where the modular sown beetroot is going to go, the beetroot that we just saw a few minutes ago. At the end, a couple of lettuces. We're harvesting from that and letting that one go to seed in the middle. These are our onions, Mesidrome onions, which I have to say, at the moment, are looking absolutely superb. Most of them have really thick stems. I think you can see this one's quite thin, but most of those stems are, well, this stem here, just to give you an indication, is at least the, the size of my thumb. The thickness of my thumb. I have to say this is so far the best looking garlic I think I've ever had at this time of year. It's taller than, certainly taller than the elephant garlic, which of course is a leek, not a garlic. Look at that. <laughs> Proud of that. That sort of makes up for the, the brassicas. Right. These are turnips that we sowed in January. And can I go in there? You can see just there that they're beginning to bulb up with their turnip, which is great. Then these carrots in this area we go in. these are the carrots that we sowed in a module in the polytunnel in january and i've planted them out be interesting to see how they do they don't normally like being moved and i've got a couple more rows of carrots And then more beetroot. The beetroot, can you see that one? No. There, sorry. The sun is so right there. Beetroot seedlings. They're coming up. Can't remember. They're Detroit. Two rows of Detroit. Some other seedlings that you're seeing in here, like this one, are marigolds that have self-seeded. And then carrots, again, there's sort of two and a half rows. There's a row there, a row here, and there's another row going up to that lettuce, which is being pecked by birds. I was hoping that... I leave that there then they'll go for that rather than other things but yeah as you can see it's mostly not worked but look down here these are the Rothild carrots not a well-known variety as far as I have seen but are germinating really well so you can't really see 
you can see there in the middle there more Rothild. I think I will make a note to do more Rothild next year as long as of course these do come to something. The snow in summer is about, oh I just noticed, I was going to say the snow in summer is about to flower but look, can you see that one, that little flower there? That's going to be a glory of white flowers very soon. Gorgeous. Right, I still need to sort out those strawberries. It's a job for this week. We go into the polytunnel. So quite a lot has now moved out. These are my third sowing of tomatoes. Amish paste doing really well, both of these. Different varieties here, not ready up yet. Then we've got cucumber. This is where I said I've sowed more chard. I've sowed them into these four. We've got mountain tea in here, nothing there yet. And then marjoram. On the right, celeriac. On the left are those roselle seedlings, the roselle, wonderful red flower that we put in. Really lovely. Right, let me get rid of that for the time being. Lettuce, outrageous at the front, which is the one that went into outer space sown in outer space. Then we've got romaine here in the middle which hasn't done too well and rocket. Not being successful with some of my lettuce this year. Not quite sure why. But these you can see they're getting their true leaves. There's a true leaf there and I will be potting those on pretty soon. Three coriander, three parsley, red ball Brussels sprouts that we got from Vivi, the seed that we got from Vivi, golden courgette which are doing pretty well at the moment and then at the back is more tomatoes from the Vixter, thank you very much for that, they're still to come through yet. As I say, none germinated in the germina in the sowing we did in February. Then we have echinacea. Let's zoom in. Echinacea in the middle there. And then poppy ice something there. Only three have germinated. Underneath. I've sown more cucumber, then we have black fatsu squash, marina de Chioggia squash, blue hubbard from Jerry, cheeky prince, and Kelly's cheeky prince there, and then over at the back here and at this station here, We've got Shaz's runner beans, that safe seed she sent us. Then we have Lazy Housewife in these two. So looking forward to seeing how those Lazy Housewife do. Quite intrigued. Right, the, the rest. So this bench is going to be going out very soon so that we can use the growing area underneath. Bit of a tidy but actually you know what everything's looking pretty good at the moment and then if I come over to this area these are our early potatoes we do have some late main crop rather to go in so at the front we've got Ulster Prince which I think virtually every one of the Ulster Prince have got some growth on them already. I'll pop you in there. Ulster Prince was the one that Tony 
recommended little farmers farm recommended then we've got charlotte and at the back we have kestrel which richard really likes so what i will be doing is topping these up when they're maybe about three inches tall i'm going to top them up with a bit more compost because the potatoes come off the stem if you like the when you plant a potato you need to plant it as deep as possible because anything that's below the ground could produce potatoes right coming up here now orlotti blue lake french bean and then madeira maroon canadian which is another french bean at the front yeah, more Canadian white, and then Gigantes right at the back. Then down in this area, we've got Coco Sophie, which is a climbing Coco de Pampole that we got from Vivi. Thank you, Vivi. And then at the, the two rows on the left are the asparagus bean, which are the long beans. So that's all sort of quite exciting, because I haven't grown some of those before. Yeah, we've got another little nursery area over there of various bits and pieces some grafted apple trees and that type of thing which is super but that's it that's what our plot looks like at the moment and it is a mix it's a mix of good and it's a mix of not so good with the brassicas and tomatoes not germinating and things like that I thought it could be the compost that was the reason that the tomatoes didn't germinate but you know what I'm not sure it was because other things did germinate but what I am going to leave you with is the apple tree look at that isn't that just glorious lots of bees on there lots of bees on there we don't get good apples from them most of them get eaten by the parakeets and really it would make sense to cut it down and have another growing area we could quite easily get another maybe four meter by two meter growing area in there but you know what she's an old beauty and she's gonna stay look at that glorious thanks for watching see you soon